Well, Hal here with more Space Engineers, and today, well, we've got some things placed. <laughs> so I actually had to change the mod li uh, layout, so the mod list will be up hopefully updated in today's video. Um, basically, there was a mod that I wanted to use that conflicts with the Small Ships Gone Large mod. Um, but on the the positive side, we get this kind of desk now instead of the other desk that we had. Um, the bed mod that we were using previously is still installed and then the new mod actually has uh, its own version of the small bed. So you end up with this thing. Uh, now the problem, the only problem I have, oh, it does, okay, you can actually pipe this in as well. Um, the one, the reason I ended up not using this is because I wanted to use that one, in here at least. Now, because of the fact that this other one can be piped in, which I didn't realize was a thing, um, <laughs> I have a feeling we're going to be end ending up using these probably over here in the bedroom area. Well, in what is currently a, a bedroom area, because I'm, I'm thinking we might be able to do like uh, bunk racks. Uh, let's see. I'm assuming I need probably that much space. So if we do one there, on two. I wonder if that's far enough for us to get into it. Oh, it is. Very nice. But it wouldn't be piped in, so we'd have to take that out. So we'd have to go, that's one. So we'd have to do that. And that would give us enough room to actually pipe it in on at least one side. And if we're using the uh, air block, the conveyor air blocks, we'd actually be able to put a diagonal in, which would give us an air vent in the room as well, a controllable air vent in the room. So we may end up doing that. Now these are the the head location side. So probably actually flip these so that the head was up against the wall. But eh. can we? Where are we? Really? So if we get into it, yeah, we actually got a room. All right, yeah, I think I think we're uh, good to go for that. All right. So the other thing, um, I really like having this door here for the sakes for building sakes. Uh, but I'm thinking that the practical application is going to be an issue. So. For me personally, it's not too bad. It's just that when you're getting in and out of the ship, the, this is, hallway is eventually going to be closed off and pressurized. Um, if we want to have this be a entry and exit point, basically this door will have to be closed. This room becomes an airlock and then depressurizes when we open up the ramp. What we have on the other side though, is we have an actual airlock, the rotary airlock door that solves that problem for us. And I think that I'm going to go with that on the other side. So let's go here. Let's get that out. So while we're doing this, uh, let's go ahead and take you apart. Unfortunately, that means you need to come out and you need to come out. And I think. I don't remember if that has to come out or not, but we'll go ahead and do it just in case. That's so. We do that. Just make sure all of this works. Right, and then so the problem that we run into is basically the same problem we had on the other side, which is all of this has to come out. Get replaced with regular blocks. 
you guys come out. Also getting replaced with our regular blocks. And then... And I think for this side we did that. Over there. And then that lets us basically just run up in here. Which is good. Um, and then I think... Go ahead and do that. Alright. That's what we did on the other side. Let's go check to make sure. Right. So the... We we're talking about some of the big things that are missing. Um, yeah, the gates. <laughs> After all of the back and forth on how we wanted to set them and the positioning and everything. Unfortunately, those gates were part of were only available because of the uh, small ships gone large mod. So those had to come out. Unfortunately. Now, what I do have is I've grabbed a couple of the force field mods. So what we'll end up with is something that is open to space. Um, one of the versions of the mod is airtight, the other one is not. So what I'm thinking is that the airtight version, uh, which can also be closed, will be one wall, will be one layer, and then we'll have the other one, which is not airtight, be a secondary layer. Uh, the thing is, is that those are ridiculously cheap to build. Uh, I mean, they're literally two steel plates on the small grid to build these things. Uh, so I'm thinking those. I don't know if we're going to do those as the inner, as the inner wall, and then the ones that are that can be closed as the outer wall, or vice versa. Um, there are benefits to both, and I'm thinking. I am thinking that the non-airtight version will be the inner area. So basically we'll use those to mark the edge of the walkway space. And then we'll have the airtight ones on the outer on the outer side of that walkway space. That way we can you know have something that looks nice, clearly identifies what's what areas are which, gives us a little bit of that separation, and then uh, also is functional. Hey, what are you? You're a private sale. Okay. So, last little bit. Let's talk about the mandibles. Um, I've gotten feedback both ways. Some people like the idea. Some people don't like the idea. Um, I'm thinking that because of the way that we're planning on doing the, thr the recessed uh, atmospheric thrusters, I'm going to keep the mandibles. And then what we'll do is I'm actually going to double up... Um, these three on both sides so we'll have seven thrusters in each mandible for 14 large thrusters lift there then when we come aft we're gonna have the recessed atmospheric thrusters in here as well which I think will I mean you're talking 16 large thrusters that means large atmospheric thrusters it should be enough to lift this thing um, what I will do is we'll we'll test that out <laughs> at some point. Oh, I'm absolutely terrified of taking something like this into an atmosphere. It's basically those thrusters are really just to keep you from destroying the thing when you you have to do an emergency landing, you know, or in a very uh, a very gravitationally light atmosphere. Uh, but yeah, so that also comes to the the jump drives this is also made available in the small stuff mod but i'm not sure how i want to place these because we're going to have at least four jump drives is the intent this stuff this one um i could actually do six of these three on either side and fit them within the same space of where we're talking about our primary propulsion missiles the other catch is, or the other option, I should say, is to mount them here on the aft wall. And I think we can get like four, maybe five of them in that way. Um, but we'll have to see. I'm not, like I said, I'm not really sure which way I want to go with this yet. But we are going to have them, and we do have them available. Okay, so the last thing we worked on engineering space. We now have everything working in here. I've actually gone ahead and set up 
a bunch of stuff. We've got everything labeled. We've got the fuel tanks in, or the hydrogen tanks, I should say, in. The windows are in. We can close this door, and the room is, is completely airtight. So we also have a little bit of space back here. And then what this allows us to do is if we wanted to, we could put additional displays in on either wall. We could have switches in here, whatever. It gives us just a little bit more room to build out some of the detailing if we want to greeble this out some. But it is, an, it is a fully functioning room. Uh, we do have a control sets so we can turn on the engines on various sides. We can turn the left and right banks on. Uh, the engine that is behind it is actually tied to the side. So if it's the port side over there, we have five of the turbines there. We have five of the turbines on the starboard side, and then we have two sets of reactors. And like I said, these are all individually controllable. So you can have as much power and as much noise as you want. <laughs> and then you have status displays that'll tell you what things are working, what their outputs are, what their inputs are. Uh, we have some reports in here talking about what's going on with the ship, including battery ch charge times. And I have decided that for the batteries, each bank that we put in will be listed as its own thing so that we'll be able to tell where the batteries are, um, at least for the most part. Like the big battery bank that we have right now that's 16 batteries, those are just the lower observation battery array. If something's wrong, it's pretty easy to figure out which one it is. You can see all the batteries. But when we start putting batteries up like in the mandibles or hiding them into the wall in the wall areas and start building them into the superstructure, we're going to need to know where those are. And I'm going to try and keep them grouped so that we can actually see, you know, it's just another way of seeing where things are going on. Uh, we have our uranium reports for the for all of our reactors and we have our overall fuel and cargo report. So. And then we have an actual cargo manifest. So this this is only a progress meter that'll tell you roughly what your percentage full is on the entire car onboard cargo system. And this will actually give you a line by line item of what the item is and a count of that item. So if you throw, um, you know, like 15 plates in here, it'll show up as steel plates 15, et cetera, et cetera. And then if it gets too long, it'll start cycling so that you can actually scroll up and down. Uh, but yeah, so we actually have a full working engineering section now, which is uh, kind of nice, actually. All the stuff in here is piped in. All the stuff up front is piped in. And then the rest of it, I think what we're going to do is I think for this bit, the portion that I am I am working on right now is deciding on this area because what I'm thinking is is what if we go with the new doors let's bring this out a little bit this is going to give us a little bit more room over here for things let's see here and so what I'm thinking is that we take this little area out here you know how we have the the oxygen tanks I'm thinking we put the oxygen tanks over here because all they are is they're just storage for you know the what we've got going on so we can actually take those let's uh, drop you out of there for a second and what we can do is we can have these set up uh, let's see just want to do that so something like that if we want it or we could rotate the whole thing 90 degrees and then that way the tanks are actually connected to each other and then we can put the uh, the vent in on them now, the other option, or I should say the potential benefit to this is that we could actually have a vent 
penetrating into the rest of the ship area here, which would be able to pull, like if we needed to depressurize the ship and store the, the O2 for some reason, um, or use that to pressurize the rest of the ship. So there is there are benefits to this design change. Uh, it just comes down to, is it going to work the way I want it to work? And I think it is, honestly. But this also means that basically your entrance will be no wider or no, yeah, no wider than this air, this will be. Which, you know, with what we were planning with the gate, it's, it actually ends up being a larger, uh, a larger entrance area by like three blocks. Uh, maybe four blocks, two blocks to a side, because the gate came out like three, two or three blocks at the uh, the narrowest point. So yeah, but we end, we basically end up with a larger hangar space and a larger gate array. So, but it is also going to be a much more expensive gate because for the airlock or for the airtight version of the force field doors, those require ten superconductors per block that it spans. So if we're talking 10 small grids, you know, th that's going to be a hundred superconductors per door. And there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 doors. That is a lot of superconductors. Let's see here. So the one that we're talking about that's airtight is this guy. So each one of these, you know, we're talking basically 100 superconductors, so 2,000 superconductors to have a doorway that's 10 blocks tall. Well, technically 9 blocks because it counts the... Right. Let's see here. I think it counts that one as a block. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, now so it is ten blocks. Ten clear ten blocks of clearance. Which means we could have a hangar be that tall, the hangar door. Which at ten blocks gives us uh, I wanna say it's roughly a little over three or four blocks per large grid or five blocks so that's yeah five blocks so we're looking at a two block two large grid block entrance if we wanted to go say 15 actually I'd probably go 16 that's 11 so 13, 14, 15, 16, which puts us a little higher than the old gate was, which I think may be too big. Let's see what this looks like. Oh no, it's actually the same height as the old gate. And we were talking about command area being here ish at least the pilot seat will be up here somewhere so you'd be looking at yeah that could clear how about if we went just this height Yeah, that actually would work. Okay, this is actually... This is high enough. It didn't require much change. Because once everything is said and done... Yeah, I mean, basically that's where the doors are going to be mounted. We could even maybe drop it down like a block. 
So if we go 15, so that's 7 and 8. Or I'd probably go 7 and 7, so go 14. So it's just, just shy of 3 blocks, 3 large grid blocks. That would be a huge small ship, a uh, utility ship of some kind. Okay. Alright, so what we're going to do today. Um, I want to get this thing up and running before the end of Friday. So I think what we're going to do is the rest of this one is basically just going to be a time-lapse build of getting the rest of the parts in, getting the doors welded up, probably getting all of this stuff welded up. Um, I need to go grab some power really quick. Quick, ah, get in there before we start dying. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I think that's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna go ahead and time lapse the rest of this.